A recent study published in the JFCR looked at the effect of whey protein in conjunction with a caloric restricted diet in trained individuals. We're going to now look at that study. Thanks for that Tom, appreciate it. So there were 16 healthy males aged between 21 and 28 years of age. They had two years experience at least of lifting the weights and they measured body composition, 1RM and also muscle endurance and resting metabolic rate. So this study was actually reviewed in mass which I highly recommend by Eric Helms and this is the table of their macronutrient distribution on training days and also off days. And now we're going to be looking at resistance training and here you can see the week overviews of the eight week studies and add an A day and B day with the repetitions increasing as the weeks increased. So here's an example taken from the paper of an actual meal plan that the subjects were given and this is on the off day. So you can see that there's 1604 calories for this example and again you can look at meals individually. Here's meal one and meal five of the plan. And then finally the supplementation. There was one whey group which had 28 grams of whey pre and post and a carb group which had Gatorade 28 grams pre and post. It was single blind, however I think you'd know the difference between Gatorade and a whey protein shake. So now I'm going to look at the table which was in mass which Eric Helms created comparing the whey group and carb group. And as you can see both groups lost body mass. However, the whey group actually didn't lose any lean body mass, where the carb group did lose some lean body mass and it was significant. As well as uh, the fat mass, the whey group lost more fat mass compared to the carb group. When it comes to the squat RM test, again, both groups increased their actual repetition maximum. However, in the bench press, there was a slight increase for the whey group and a slight decrease for the carb group. However, the benefits to the carb group was on the endurance test, they actually showed a significant difference compared to the weight group in the amount of repetitions they could complete. And finally, the resting metabolic rate. Again, there was a decrease from baseline in both groups, but more so in the weight group. In summary, I just want to start off by saying thank you to Eric Helms, Mike Zulos and Greg Knuckles for allowing me to use the screenshots from the mass subscription to go through this study. This study is probably one of the worst reported studies that I've actually seen. That table we just looked at was after Eric Helms spent hours and hours putting numbers in an Excel spreadsheet to actually get that information because in the actual paper, there was no table. Normally you see a pre, during and post. Also, even in regards to the nutrition, Eric Helms had to spend time calculating and working out roughly how many grams of protein each group had. And after his calculations, he found that the group which actually supplemented with the protein was around 2.9 grams per kilogram of their body weight. And the group which was the carb group was still in a relatively high amount of protein at 2.6, especially for scientific studies. So I'd highly recommend that you check out MASS. We've got a link in the description below. They look at the latest scientific papers in regards to strength and physique. And also they do video lectures as well. If you like this video, hit like. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to get more videos like this.